All right, can everyone hear me? Cool, let's see if this works this time. Um, I don't, for, for those of you that were at uh, CF Summit Basel, there was maybe a, a slight hiccup there, but um, I, I'm, I'm, I've got my fingers crossed on this one. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be demoing a number of new-ish capabilities uh, in Cloud Foundry application runtime. I'll be using a number of CFCLI plugins in this demo. Um, a lot of these capabilities are available in the API already. Um, it's just not fully baked in the CFCLI. So you can follow this bit.ly URL to, to go check those out. They're of very much dev quality. Lots of disclaimers over there. Okay, um, so you can take a look. Here's a list of all of the plugins I have installed for this demo. Um, so to start with, we've got three apps uh, pushed in this space. And I wanted to start with showing um, off metadata, um, a new capability. You can add metadata to apps, org spaces, many of the objects in Cloud Foundry. Um, so we can uh, use this uh, plugin uh, to add an environment variable to uh, this app called Hello Jack. Uh, that's my son's name. And we'll say the department is equal to CF. Uh oh, oops. Oh, there's a dash in there. Got it. Cool. So that applied. Um, and we can take a look at the metadata on um, another app here. Uh, this app editor has uh, similar metadata, maybe a different department here. And it also has an uh, annotation um, with this description, Vim really is the best. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and you can um, also, with labels, you can uh, select on uh, labels. So let's show that. We've got CF select apps with the department equal to CF label, and that's Hello Jack. And then uh, the label CFAR, and that's editor. Um, so, so that's just a preview of what you can do with metadata. There's lots and lots of use cases here. Really interested to see what, what folks come up with and, and think to do. Um, all right, moving on next, we're going to show off uh, multiple application ports. So um, we've got this editor app here. I wanted to show real quick um, this app. It really is running um, on uh, port 8080. Again, best editor is Vim. This is actually a very silly app. It's a Spring Boot app, but it's uh, using CF Linux FS3. It's using uh, Cloud Foundry's OpenJDK 11. So we're all good there on that front. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is show that you can now, um, if you enable the actuator port on a uh, actuators on a different application port um, on port 8081, uh, we, we can now uh, enable and configure that. Um, so that's editor. Uh, the domain is that. We're going to call it actuator. And uh, the port, 8081, different from the default port. And it says, OK, that totally worked, right? Um, so we secured this actuator endpoint. Um, I actually enabled uh, the thread dump uh, endpoint for this. And uh, we can take a look at it and see that, yes, I can trigger um, a thread dump off of this endpoint. And uh, let's pipe that to JQ so it looks a little more normal. Oops, not that more. So that looks like a thread dump, right, everyone? It was secure, it's on a different port, and uh, that's, that's multiple application ports. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> uh, wanted to show revisions. So we've shown in the last few summits uh, revisions 
um, being able to do, uh, or sorry, uh, rolling deployments. Um, one of the pieces of feedback that we got about uh, rolling deployments uh, was that it'd be quite nice to roll back. Um, so here we can see we have this uh, plugin. Uh, we can look at the revisions for Dora. Um, and we can uh, uh, see that right now on version two, um, with this particular droplet good here, Dora is saying, hello, I'm Dora. And uh, what we can do now um, in a uh, rolling deployment way, kind of bouncing, is to say CF rollback Dora to version one, a totally different droplet. And we should see that um, it says it's succeeded, it said go, this is kind of asynchronous, so that should take a, a, a little bit here, but it should say something different. There we go. We've rolled back to Dora. We didn't have any downtime, and just very smooth. Um, uh, one, one other thing, oh, what's uh, CF revisions? Dora, there. Um, uh, uh, you can see that uh, when I rolled it back, it created a new uh, revision here, three, uh, but with the same droplet GUID as the one I rolled back to. So that's, that's that last piece of, of revisions. All right, moving on. Oh, weighted routing. This is the, the last thing I wanted to, to demo. Um, so I'm going to show um, the ability to uh, use weighted routing between two apps, uh, Hello Jack and Dora, and um, using the, the new Istio routers that uh, are, are now available for you all to, to try out. Um, so we can see that, um, let's see, we can see what Hello Jack is, is saying. Um, that says, hello, I'm Jack. And uh, we can then, um, what we would do is look for the domains that is my, uh, the domain mapped to those Istio routers, and then uh, map these routes. Um, so using the, the very normal map route command, uh, specify the domain there, specify a host name of hello. Um, you can see, let's see, we'll cycle through this. Over here, like this. There we go. So this is pretty cool, actually, already at this point, <laughs> because uh, this is is coming through the Istio routers through through to the app. So that's already kind of working and configured. Um, step two: uh, map uh, another app to that that same um, thing. So hello, Jack, and we can map that same domain. Oops. Do, do, do. Um, to, to that same host name over here. That's all also added and uh, within 15 to 30 seconds, that should also be eventually consistent. Um, and you can see that uh, balanced between the two apps. Um, by default, when you uh, map the route, there's a weighting of one. Um, the current UX, um, the CLI plugin I'm about to show you, will allow you to, um, there you go, see some amount of hello Jack, hello Dora, and it'll be eventually consistent with those, those Istio routers. Um, so for the, the actual like kind of cool waiting, uh, uh, weighted routes part, um, using this plugin over here, we're going to um, give Jack a little more weight. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, that route over here. And we're going to say 40. Um, so right now you can um, specify um, the weight, a number between 1 and 128. Oh, update. Uh, oops. Right had those mixed around, update route weight, totally different things. Um, and the way that um, someone on the networking team explained to me how this should work is that for every, you take the, the weights of the two apps, 
Um, so 40 and one, you add those together. Um, so for every 40 requests, um, 40, or 41 requests, 40 of them should go to one, one should go to the other, roughly. <laughs> um, and I'm vamping, again, a little bit, because 15 to 30 seconds for this to take effect. Um, we should see a, a steady stream of, hello, I'm Jack. Um, and then very, very, I, I think it took that part, and, and, and I'm waiting for it to actually say, hi, I'm Dora. Because that would actually show it's, it's balancing a little bit. So this is it's totally going to do it any, any second now, 15 to 30 seconds, they told me. <laughs> oh. oh, where is the networking team? <laughs> Well, um, anything else? Oh, so CF Linux FS3. You all should really be migrating to that um, this month. That's, that's going to be uh, end of support this month. And yeah, still more vamping. No, did, did, some, did it happen? No, no, no. I totally did this right, right? All right, well, I'm gonna take my time here, but it, it totally works. Um, you all can try it, um, and thank you very much.